Okay, I think we're ready to go. Yep. So, what's this one about? Oh, I'm going to criticise an Osmo product on the internet. <laughs> Sorry, forgot what? Oh, God, yeah. Tim foil app. <laughs> Well, hello again and welcome back to my channel now. This one's gonna get a bit messy. Uh, where do I start? Last year I did a video about the front cladding on my workshop and I asked the question, has Osmo UV oil failed me? Now I'm always at pains to point out on this channel that I am really just an enthusiastic amateur. I'm not in the trade, but I'm really keen to learn. So for a myriad of reasons, uh, or variety should I say, um, it didn't work out. So that could have been the wood species, the sap, the northwest of England climate, uh, the unusually hot summer we had last year. All of those you could throw into the mix and it started, for whatever reason, to fail in patches. So there was silver in them, black sort of appearing in bits. So I was bought into Osmo UV oil at this point, um, a very expensive product. So I decided to sand it back and follow the instructions to the letter and we are now into May the following year, so we haven't even made it to summer, and it's failing again. So has Osmo UV oil failed me? In this instance, yes, it has. Now, I'm conscious when I was putting my tinfoil hat on here, let me point out the um, issues around me saying this. Now, if you go into the comments section on my last video, you get a lot of, um, straight talking but people who have a very good knowledge base explaining the possibilities of why it didn't work out what I should do differently boom 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 okay then there are a group of people who no matter what you say it is your fault there is nothing wrong with the product it's you okay and literally completely blind or oblivious to the fact that there could be an issue with it. So we're going to call these lot the osmogasms, okay, or the osmogasms, um, <laughs> right? And they can get a little bit funny with you, you know what I mean? Um, and it, it's kind of, because I posted these in some woodworkers forums as well, and if you look in... Um, some woodworkers forums and people ask about finishes indoor outdoor finishes it's a blind osmo and you, and so you follow up with that question so what's your experience with it? oh i haven't used it in that but that's what you need to get and i don't get it i just don't get it all right because what i'm going to do with this one is i am out with osmo now i have had it all right i was doing a little bit of uh, research before i come in for this video and a three litre tin of Osmo UV oil extra, the stuff, the better stuff you're meant to get, is in and around 70 pounds in the UK now. So 70 quid for three litres. Um, and that is a very expensive finish, a very expensive product. And I was getting comments like going, well, it's obviously going to need annual maintenance. And you're thinking, well, if it needs annual maintenance, why am I buying Osmo? Because if everything's going to need annual maintenance, why am I paying twice the price for a product that is failing me? I just can't get my head around that at all. So this is the plan. We are going to go out and I'm going to talk you through as things are happening, what I'm going to do to replace uh, this product that is, to me, a bit useless. All right, shoot me down. <laughs> where's, where's my tinfoil hat gone? So the first stage was to sand everything back using my Festool ETS EC150 with 120 grit sandpaper. And this was back breaking work and done over the course of two and a half days. Not having the luxury, shall we say, of being able to switch between arms really does take its toll on your back, your shoulder and my good arm. And to be honest, I was kind of missing my Mercaderos random orbit sand that I used to own and replaced with the Festool. When it comes to vertical sanding because the Deros is so much lighter it'd make a job like this much much easier. Now before anyone says anything in regards to it not looking that bad 
Um, the camera hasn't really done it justice and it was a preemptive strike at this stage because I could see the silver and the black spots coming through again. So I wasn't going to allow it to deteriorate like it did last year and decided to get in before it gets any worse. The next stage is to get all of the dust removed from the cladding, cleaned up and ready to apply a finish. Now for this stage I'm actually using turpentine substitute. I found this in my local builders merchant and it was much cheaper than the real deal. I simply just applied this with a cloth and then left it to thoroughly dry before getting ready to add a finish. At this stage I did go back and revisit a couple of spots that I thought needed a little bit extra attention, sanded them back and then cleaned them up ready for the next stage. The next stage is to mix up the finish that is going to replace the Osmo UV oil and for this I'd like to thank two of my subscribers. British Bulldog 8966 and French Farmhouse Dairies who both suggested a 2 to 1 mix ratio of boiled linseed oil and turpentine. In this uh, situation I'm using turp subs because it was much cheaper and hopefully will work just as well. Now I'm going to be spraying this using my Wagner W100 spray gun so I got the mixture into the container, gave it a good shake, ready for its first coat. Okay, the second coat's just drying outside now and it's looking lovely. I'll make a decision tomorrow whether to go at it with a third coat. Right, yeah, appreciate I went on a bit of a rant before. Was I right to call it useless? Uh, no, I wasn't, because if you look into my back catalogue, uh, I have two videos about um, an epoxy resin project, whether it's suitable for outdoor use, and it actually became more of a test of the wood finishes and whether that will keep the wood stable so the epoxy resin wouldn't split away from it and Osmo UV oil came at the top of that list and that's what gave me really the confidence to go at it with the cladding on the front side because I wanted to, to bring out the colour but I wanted consistency as well and that's what it didn't deliver. Do you know if it goes, if it silvers but it silvers all over then I'm, I'm alright with that but if it goes all patchy then it just looks wrong and that's where I've gone on a little bit of a ramp, but also folk firing back at it at you that it's your fault, you know, because there can't be anything wrong with the product. And you've got to meet people halfway, I think, really. You know, I probably made mistakes putting that out on the first time when I first used it. Uh, but once bitten, twice shy, I'd done it the second time and it still wasn't working, then yeah, there is an issue with the product for my needs, all right? Not to say is it completely useless full stop. No, that can't be true. And just a couple of little points to make to finish up because it might help you in your thought process when you're thinking about what treatment to use for your cladding and that's the cost. Now, 
The five litres of boiled linseed oil I got off Amazon for £28, which makes it £5.60 a litre. The four litre of Terp subs was on offer at Hue and Gray's and that was £12, so it makes it £3 a litre. So if we're doing the two to one mix ratio, so two litres of boiled linseed oil, one litre of Terps makes it £14.20 a litre. Now, two coats on the, with the spray gun and I used just under a litre. All right, so that's bringing it in at £4.73, if, say, if I rounded it up to a litre. So if my annual maintenance is £4.73, then I'm more than happy to get the spray gun out and give it a couple of coats once a year. Um, if my annual maintenance is substantially more, having to paint it on using Osmo, then I just don't, I just don't see the point. I just don't get it. Um, you know the logic. You know the logic speaks for itself there. But uh, there are folk who are, um, you know, absolutely adamant it's the right stuff. And you know what? For them, it might well be. Um, I do have a poll set up on the community tab of my YouTube channel, which is basically asking the question about is Osmo overpriced? So if you want to get involved in the debate, then, you know, cast your vote over on that. And also let me know in the comments. I've got my tinfoil hat ready. You know, I'm ready to take some sticks. So, you know, fire away. <laughs> but I just wanted to put that out there and let you know because, you know, I, I've had it with that now. I won't be returning to that product again. And it's kind of given me a not a great sense for the, the their other products really, but you know, that's just me. Uh, and I have, in my opinion, better alternatives, uh, hard wax oils than poly -X. But anyway, that's a, an entire different video sometime once I've recovered from this one. <laughs> okay, folks, as ever, you know, take care, look after yourselves uh, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.